So I'm not going back and forth with a man who thinks that they should be in my position. If you want to be in my position, get in my position. Do you believe that? Bluff City Media presents The Anthony Sane Show on YouTube at Bluff City Media. Stepping up to the microphone is your host, Anthony Sane. Acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Anthony Sane Show. This, of course, is your host, Anthony Sane. Here live from the Bluff City Media Studio, Kenny Stubblefield behind the glass. Kenny, what's going on with you, my brother? My brother, you good? Man, good, man. Uh, man, the weather's constantly changing, tearing Ugh. your boy throat situation up, man. But it's all good, man. It's all good. I'm here. Glad to be here. Uh, since the last time we talked, Kenny Stubblefield, a lot of things happened in college basketball. We crowned two national champions, Kenny, mm-hmm. in, in two totally different tournament situations. Uh, one is played by men, one is played by women, <laughs> but that's not the only difference. One was absolute ass, but the other one was incredible, bro. Damn. And we'll talk about that today. Uh, I was able to watch at least the championship games for both. I told you, man, I, I've had my interest in watching a single NCAA tournament game on the men's side goes away more and more every year. I watch fewer and fewer games every year. Uh, the actual only game I sat down and watched was the national championship game. Just going to be honest with you. Yeah. As far as me act- sitting down and watching games. I didn't watch many either. And I'm going to talk about something that I feel like it is a lie. I think the illusion of wanting to see the upsets and all that, I think that is a bold face lie. I think we say that. I think it's cool to see the buzzer beaters and all those type of things. But something – Something that's different. I'm going to tell you two things that are different between the men's side and the women's side. And shout out to that women's game, which is absolutely oh, incredible. Those, those, the final four games were incredible. All those things incredible, right? The BS call, I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't even feel like we're wasting my energy about the people who would say, well, it was it was, it was, a, it it was, was a moving the screen. Well, actually, Anthony. But, yeah, uh, and, the, and, the, and the championship game started off with Caden Clark pushing the girl back to the free throws line. They didn't yeah. even call it push-off. Yeah. So let's, let's not play about, talk about that. But, but I'll say this. Big difference between the men's side and the women's side. We talked about this last week as well. Your final four on the women's side contain con- consisted of three ladies that will be mm. high-level players in the WNBA and another team full of ladies that will probably be in the WNBA as well without one, without one standoff star, right? South Carolina won the championship, undefeated, all those type of things, right? They don't have that bucket getter, go, go give it to her, she'll score 30 points. Yeah. But the other teams did, you know what I mean? Then you had uh, – did Juju's team make the Final Four? I can't remember. No, they did not. All right, but you had that level of player playing in the Wait, league. Wait, did USC bro. make the Final Four? They, they said they did. Am I wrong on that? Hold on. No, they didn't. Because South Carolina didn't put USC out. And yeah, Iowa they put – UConn. They lost in the Elite Eight. Yeah, that's right. All right. That's right. But this is the point I'm trying to make, bro. Men's college basketball is set up where if I'm Reed Shepard, right, if I'm Rob Dillingham, mm-hmm. I'm going to be a NBA high-level role player, you know, second or third best player on the team type guy. High draft pick. I can't be on a team more than likely that's going to get past the second weekend. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's a good chance that a team full of dudes that look like the guy that played for Indiana State can put our ass out in the tournament. Right. In the women's game, the stars start. <laughs> they played up until it's true. the final weekends of the tournament. We didn't see that on the men's side. It's true. A lot of your, your high-profile – you had the kid Castle. You had uh, Klingon. You had Edie, who will be a top twenty pick, top you know first round pick or whatever. But the the, the high caliber NBA future of the NBA guys for years have not been the guys who you see in the tournament. Right. Like the two centers we, that battled yesterday, those guys aren't like going to be top three, number one, number two picks in the draft. But in the women's side. The stars, the stars of all stars, are mm. good are are good enough to take their teams deep into the tournament. Mm. And you're not seeing those, those parallels. And the women's game, like I said, the uh, women's championship game is cool. You had um, Caitlin Clark, who was not able to finish the story. I, I predicted a WWD esque WWE esque uh, <laughs> national championship game. Did not see that start off early. Like I said, that was an egregious push off to start the game. Well, we you didn't thought see I, you, did you have Iowa winning that game? No, I thought Sarah Klein was going to win. But oh, I, I thought they were going to beat them bad. My, my thing was, if they don't beat them bad, they're going to lose. Because if it's close, these, these refs are going to get start turning into fans <laughs> yeah. and, and watch Kalen Clark. And a lot of stuff that we call cheating is just refs turning into fans. They they started watching the game. Oh, of course. With fan eyes, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. we did not see that. Um, I, I have opinions on Klingon. And Edie, all those type of things. I'm going to say those for when Paris comes on. Yeah. After this, uh, it's going to be a good segment. Paris Sharkey, of course, uh, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for Bluff City Media. He's about to join us. We'll talk about that with him. Um, but like I said, the tournament, 
the women's tournament, like I said, you got to see the stars be stars, and you saw these ladies up until the final weekends, final games of the season. And on the men's side, you didn't. You had to battle the big men. But it just – The storylines in women's basketball, the women's basketball tournament this year were – light years better right. than anything the men. And I guarantee you that when the men numbers come out, the women's they'll, they'll show. Uh, the numbers were stupid, right? right. Like setting records, 18.7 million people watched that mm -hmm. championship game. And that game, like I said, that game yesterday was boring as shit. Yes. Because it's <laughs> yeah. Purdue, who, who definitely didn't have the manpower to beat UConn, a team that's, you know, got pros on it. And you got Edie feeding him the ball and taking 25 shots. I'm like, bro, I do not want to see this yeah. booty ass stuff. Like, it just wouldn't, it wasn't good at all to me. But um, women's basketball is in really good shape, Anthony. Who you telling? Whew. Who you telling? Cause like that's another thing I'm trying to say, man. Like this, this fake desire for parity, that's cool. But the women's tournament, they wasn't parody in the women's tournament. The, the best teams the made best it to the teams end. Made it to and the they end. beat the hell out of all these scrub ass teams yeah. that they played. And when they played against each other, it was good ass basketball games. Well, and I mean, you could say the same thing about the men's tournament, mm -hmm. too, because Purdue and UConn were the two, were best, the two teams best teams in the country teams. by mm -hmm. far. But yeah. in terms of like the final four, right? Like the final mm -hmm. eight, man, those storylines coming out of that were incredible. Yeah. That LSU Iowa game, incredible storylines. Off Dawn chain. Staley, dude, she's a rock star. Man, did you see the uh, the gospel remix of <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Somebody took her interview at the end of the game. Yeah. It put like uh organ, like black nah, church organ I on. Love it. <laughs> I, love it. I gotta find it to it to you, but it was so good. <laughs> yeah. It had to be somebody actually playing the organ to that. Because there's no way they just kinda like timed it up perfectly. No, yeah, they didn't yeah. edit it. Like, but like, no, there's somebody yeah. actually playing the organ to her, like tuning yeah. her up. Like it's nobody. <laughs> it's great though, bro. I'm gonna send it to you for Unbelievable. sure. Unbelievable. But Don Staley is the GOAT. That I'm talking about is is it it, it, it it excites me to see somebody who's young. She she checks out so many boxes that excite me personally. She's yeah. young, yeah. she's black, she's a lady, and she's a former player. And she's coming in and she's dominating women's college basketball. And she does not look like the goats in the past. She's not. I've always thought Gino Oriembo was a creep. Like I'm, I'm like, bro, you you got me a certain level of nasty. <laughs> That's a conversation for another day. <laughs> yeah. I've always thought that dude was a creep, man. But anyway. Uh, He's got a weird – his energy is weird. Man, I've always man. thought he was weird. a creep. I, I would be shocked. I don't know if it's creep energy, but it's just definitely like okay. – He got that UConn like, like entitlement we'll energy see. that I'm not a fan of. We'll see. <laughs> but <laughs> – Sometimes it takes but a while then, for this but stuff then you to come see out. But you see it on ESPN. They had a bunch of, like, like Dinah Taurasi and Sue Bird were, you know, doing their little show. That was Slick Hayden, too. Man. Then, what's her name? Brianna Stewart was hating, too. That was Slick Hayden on Caitlin, I'm saying. Yeah, no, 100%. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate Diana Taurasi's statement. You've been doing this against 18 year olds. Because we celebrated Bradley Bill when he did that in front of his, with his AAU team. Mm -hmm. He said the same thing. Like, y'all going to come and try to take my job. Oh. Right? And hey. that's what Diana Taurasi's saying. Like We've been doing this. We've been doing this. Like this ain't you're you're about to experience Bro, something. Bro, I new. cannot wait because oh, oh, those, man. those ladies, hey, you think dudes are petty. Man. What's pettier than come on now? <laughs> come on now. But Brianna said something like Caitlin's legacy is not gonna be what it should be because she didn't win a ring. Man, come that's on. Hate. That's hate. She took Iowa to two straight yep. championship games. Yep. It's Iowa. Be, I can't wait. I can't wait to see how that's going to go down next year for sure. Who that's going to be fun. But yeah, uh, but Perry Sarkey, like I said, he's going to join us. We'll talk about uh, the NCAA championship game with him, the guys' game with him, and uh, the two big men. How, how, how yeah. he would like to see them, or if he would like to see them on the Grizzlies at all. We'll talk about that and more when we come back here on the Anthony Sane Show. We'll see you guys in a minute. You see a guy like that with the 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 ability to be as fleet of foot as he is. Right. He doesn't run the floor great, but that's not really what you have to do in an NFL situation right. at offensive tackle. But you see his feet, you see his size, you see his strength. I think most guys look at that like frame and they're like left tackle. NFL. Guy. And and, yeah. and and most NFL coaches, we've seen this in the past. They have a lot of of of, of pride in their ability to develop. Yes. I think most guys say, give me a summer with that kid. 
and let's get him at left tackle. No, he doesn't run the floor like some premier gazelle big. No. But that's not – you're working in short areas yes. to be a tackle in the NFL, and he's shown in short areas <laughs> that he's got hey, sweet footwork for his, his size. His spin move is kind of nasty. It is. It is. It's nasty. No. And honestly, and you tell me how far-fetched this is, if I was him, that's what I would do. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Jalen Nichols, SEC tackle. Supposedly he was going to be a starter last year. He said exactly what you would expect of an SEC tackle. Big, wide body, solid frame kit, incredibly strong. Mario Anderson, Miller, South Carolina. We got a little pipeline to the Gamecocks. Good addition to a solid running back room. A guy that will fight, will strain. I mean, you got to love that, right? You might see a, a beast of a offensive line this year. Yeah, and I'm not uh, – I will say, you know, having lost um, likes. Um, pounders. Pounders. Um, Y'all's boy. Who should not be named. Davion Carter. I mean, I, I was worried about offensive line, and now, like, I know it's only one report. It's from Noah Franklin as a strength coach for, like, yeah, than I'm at. This might be alone. our This might be our best offensive line. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show, man. Got my guy, Perry Shark, in the yes, building. Uh, like any other wins, every other wins. And my boy in this joint, man, Perry Shark, of course, he's the uh, greatest beat writer for Bluff City Media. That gig's about to wrap up soon because the season's about to be over. I ain't going to lie, bro. I've never been as in much anticipation <laughs> as the season being over. <laughs> man, it's right now, bro. <laughs> hey, Paris, before we get too far into this interview or into this conversation, we also have the newest 901 Wrestling commentator. Oh, don't play with me, bro. In the house, oh, yeah. man. What's hey, up? Know what's up, bro. Let's know what's up. Bro. Round of applause today, man. Hey, we know what's up, man. Hey, man. Man, I'm yeah. pretty killing you. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, the suit jacket on. Hey, hey man, looking, like a, <laughs> looking like a straight executive out <laughs> right. there, man. Hey, the contacts in on y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all know what's up, man. Look at Uber Sexy out there. Shout out to my people at 901 Wrestling, man. You know what I'm saying? Biggest, been keeping that secret on lock for a while, man. We, we, we touch and agree, made that agreement. To make that happen, but you know we uh, went on and, and unveiled it on y'all last uh, na- last Saturday. Uh, make sure y'all come out May 18th to the Black Lodge, uh, our first, I guess you could say, premium event uh, <laughs> of the Anthony the Same era. It's called yeah. Hyped Up. <laughs> it's gonna be May 18th at the Black Lodge. Um, yeah, come out and check that out, man. It's gonna be a big show. Uh, matches we know are gonna happen are Andy Mack versus Bobby Ford, uh, the Top Shotters versus uh, what's Twisted Steel. That's gonna be another match that's already confirmed. We got a new champion and Ken Dang, uh, who defeated my man Kevin Bliss is no longer eighteen nineteen champion oh of the my world. Gosh. So we got a new eighteen nineteen champion and Ken Dang. Uh, but y'all go check it out, man. But uh, something else that happened last weekend. <laughs> I'm so tired oh, of y'all, thanks. bro. Y'all, uh, the reason why I'm ready for this season to be over is because y'all ain't got shit to talk about. Specifically, bro, I was on Daniel Greer's show, Greer's Nine and One. I mm-hmm. got out the which game, one of them games last week. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, that beat was, Milwaukee. Yeah. The Milwaukee game. Yeah, yeah and he had asked me, like, what, um, I guess, like, highs and lows of the season. My low was like, bro, Twitter. Grizz Twitter. <laughs> There's so, nothing to talk about. <laughs> like, Grizz Twitter, bro. Nothing Twitter to talk about, man. Like, right now, I get, I get this dude literally screaming at me. I'm assuming this is a guy. might have been a lady. Screaming at me on Twitter, bro. All caps. And not just exclamation points. He's using emoji uh, exclamation points. Like, like uh, bro. similar to J- what, what am I got? Uh, Crowder. Jack Crowder. Not, uh, <laughs> I don't know who you talking about, but I'm like, bro. I can't think of. Uh, man, I can't think somebody of on Twitter? No, uh, he always do all caps. Guy used to play for the Grizz. He with Milwaukee now. Oh, um, okay, Jay Crowder. Yeah, Jay Crowder. I yeah, say yeah, yeah. Right. yeah he okay. said he, oh, yeah. I said his name wrong. Yeah. So, man, like, okay. So, I saw Doc Holliday talk about this. I saw fans talk about this. And Doc was like, hey, I'm probably wrong because I'm speaking through. I got a question. Did you, delete, did you delete his video? I don't know. I tried this? to go find it. About that? Yeah. I couldn't oh, find yeah. no more because I didn't pro- see it. Initially. I mean, because he was like, I'm probably wrong. I, I might be okay. too old. Y'all tell me what's happening. So I missed it because I was wanting to watch it later, but yeah. I couldn't find it when I went for it. Oh, he might have done it. But basically, the doc was talking about the Marcus Gasol thing, right? Yeah. He was like saying, um, I noticed that the players weren't there, like to the, like the current players weren't there. And, uh, you know, people just started going in. These guys need to learn uh, 
to respect the past and these guys are the, the legacies of this organization they play for and we pay these guys millions and if these guys were like those guys and all that. And I'm sitting back like, and I told Doc, I said, Doc, I get, he liked my tweet too. I said, Doc, I get what you're trying to say. I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But I just don't agree with you. My thing is that we know what the core four was to us, but it's also it had to, you had to be there yeah, type yeah. moment. Like if you didn't live through those moments and you're not a Memphis Grizzlies fan, those things don't apply to you. Like, right. Because if you pull back, if you pull back from, if you get out from under the microscope and you pull the camera back, you look from a national NBA scale, that era of time means absolutely nothing. Bro. Like it's it's no different than yep. uh, I'm trying to think who who was the team last year. Um, it's no different than the the Miami Heat run last year to the NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who did uh, or the Lakers run to the Conference Finals last year. Or, yeah. or what I mean, like stuff. I think Miami is good because they made two championship appearances yeah. in like the last four years. And, with, and, there's, with, and there's yeah. a bunch of dudes on those teams and nobody's no nobody's gonna yep. talk about let's go retire Gabe Vincent's jersey. You right. know what I mean? Like nobody gives a damn about Gabe Vincent or, or my guy that went to Cleveland like Max Struess. Yeah, yeah. No, right. But like we had we had some we had a great time with that or that run, right? And it's undeniable how important the core throw was to Memphis. Because like they said in the Marcus All documentary the city didn't care about the Grizzlies until mm-hmm. the core four came. Game, yep. Like, even when we had playoff runs. We didn't win a playoff game. And we didn't win a playoff yeah, game. Pe- people still were closet Grizzly fans here in Memphis. We yep. couldn't – we weren't proud Grizzly fans. Man, it was bad because you had the run. The t- at that time, the Tigers were making those runs yeah. to the League every year. So, so that, that core four team put that team on the map here. Yep. Right? Not, mm-hmm. not, not in national eyes, it put it on the map here, which is what matters. Yep. That's mm-hmm. what made the Grizzlies become our city's team, right? Like, mm-hmm. us – that team, that organization became endeared to us through that run. Yep. But you had to be there, bro. Like, you had to watch that to get that. Mm-hmm. John Moran and them didn't see that. Nope. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he didn't grow up a Grizzlies fan. Like, John said, yeah, I used to go to Grizzlies games. But it's not the same, bro. Like, yeah. the only person on this current roster that has any connection to that is Jaron Jaren Jackson Jr., played, who played with Mark for yeah. one season. Who never played with Zebo or Tony. Right. He played and with we, Mikey Mark. And we saw – it's just like – it's just like if Jay Crowder's jersey got retired. Like, Jaren's not – I don't care if Jaren goes to that or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same amount of time, though. You know what I mean? It's like – it's – and, like, this, this is something else that our fan base has to stop doing, bro. Like, we have this inclusion mentality where we watch maybe our Lakers jersey retirement for Powell or we watch one for Kobe and all this. We're not the Lakers organization, bro. Like, and that's cool. And, like, just because you saw all the Lakers players there for that – we're not that level organization. Yeah. And you know something else is different. Like, And people start putting out all these reasons why, right? Like, well, you know, uh, so-and-so had this going on, and they had a game, and this, they had to go do this and this. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, I, don't, I don't have to make excuses yeah, for it. Like, like, I'm fine with the exactly. reality of it. Like, these dudes, <laughs> I'm fine with the reality. These dudes don't care about it. <laughs> but we have this inclusion mentality where it's like we want right. to talk, make, make ourselves as important as what other teams are doing and what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Bro, like, and I ain't going to lie, man. Like, I know this is going to come off as hate or whatever. Marcus All is not who y'all trying to make him out to be, bro. Mark was that dude. Mark was a very good player. He was a very key part of that run, right? But even within that run, he's not the player that people are trying to make him like he is, right? Because yep. I'm listening to Jeff Calkins show, and he's talking to Jeffrey Wright. He's like, uh, uh, he was like, man, there were way more people who were critical of Tony than Mark, right? People, people uh, like Mark better than Tony, right? I was like, no. No, no, that's not true at all. Nah. That is false in I every had, way. I had several irrational conversations. Think about it. Tony with, is getting his thumb retired because of it. <laughs> literally. And I guarantee you when, when, when T.A. Not, come back for the for yeah. retirement, this shit going to be live. Bro. Right. Because literally, stat-wise, why Tony Allen getting his jersey retired? He didn't get his jersey retired because he's he was a the, beloved player. Yeah, he was the most beloved Because he was like, well, Tony got more criticism. I'm like, no, but there were people nah. who actually didn't really fool with Mark like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, we're, we're uh, like, I'm, I'm not going to, like, I, I've been on Twitter for, this whole time, like, man, Mark was that dude. Mark was cold. Oh, man, this is, this got me in tears. Oh, this is dope. All those things true. Yeah, that's true. Two Mark things is, can be true. Mark is not the player yeah. we're trying to elevate <laughs> him to be. Two things can be true, right? And especially in the, in the faces of these players, yeah, bro. Facts. And, like, and here's another thing, too. <laughs> if, if, if John and them were playing and they had uniforms on, yeah, you probably could have got them a little longer. They was already dressed <laughs> and ready to go. <laughs> was, Thank you. Like, bro, <laughs> can I, hey, they just had to sign. They was the street club. They had to sign <laughs> Timmy Allen, who we had to try right. to make sure that wasn't Tony Allen in disguise. I thought they had to play. <laughs> to get eight players to play in the game. <laughs> like, hey, man, let me ask you have this. no connection to that. Let me ask you this question. You're not, uh, you're not on bro say it again am i not on no um here i am yeah go ahead if my if if 
if Mark wasn't a part of the core four with Tony and with Zebo specifically, mm-hmm. would he have been treated like Pal in this organization? Does that make sense? Say it one more time. The way that Pal was looked at, the way he got shipped out, the way that the fans were out on him, they didn't leave too soft to this, to that. If Mark wasn't a part of that core group of guys with Zebo specifically and with Tony specifically, he'd been looked at the same way. He'd been looked at the same, same way. way as Powell, Powell, it's right? hard. The only reason it's hard to ask that question is because well, it's hard to answer that question because I guess are you saying put him in where Powell situation? If Mark was a, if Mark's in a situation basically, where he was the best player on his team, like right? And with no Zebo, no, yeah. with no Tony Allen, with no Mike Conley, right? His trajectory would have been almost been as, Powell. Would have yeah. been, been the exact same exactly. career arc as, as yep. Powell here. Mm-hmm. He would end up going to some other team and probably doing the same thing. Yep. But man, it's it's uh it's wild, bro. Because it's like. And I'll say this, man. Like, you, you, and people are saying like, uh, if these guys could be like this guys, so no, you're not gonna be like those guys. They're a lot better players than the guys on the court for. <laughs> like, like Jaron, Ja, Bain, like I said, they're better the than those. Top, the Grizzlies, <laughs> I'm top sorry. points per, top five points players, points per game, <laughs> right? Four, oh no, it was included with Ja. It was Jaren twenty points Bain. a game. <laughs> Jaron scored twenty five this year. Heck, even Pau Gasol didn't even he wasn't even scoring that kind of points. Zebo like, was like four. Nah, y'all better stop <laughs> nah, playing. Like, was fourth. like I'm, I'm riding with these dudes, man. Like, and I and I lived through the core four, bro. Like, right. I understand how important 100%. that was. Yeah. Like, I'm those dudes. Those, that team, those teams yeah. aren't as good as this team is. You you said this a few weeks ago. This team right now would dominate the core four. They would kill them. Oh, yeah. and, and if you think you think I'm wrong, you're crazy. And here's another thing too. People's like, well, this team is. They got one first round win, and that team went to the conference finals. They were thirty something years old. So when that happened, bro, the core four, John number still kids. Like, the core four lost in the four, first round four times in yeah. seven years. And the teams with the teams with, uh, and I want to say they had like a a right above five hundred playoff record. Period. Like yeah. those that core four, those core four I teams. Mean, right? They lost in the first round four. Outside times. that Western Conference Finals run, they didn't do shit in the playoffs. They got swept in there. It was getting yeah. ass bounced out the playoffs. First round. They went to four the second times, round. Like they you made said. second round twice. West Coast fighting once, first round, lost four times. And like by comparison, you want to compare ages and shit. Like when Mark and Mike was here, teams were sorry as shit. <laughs> like, yeah, we saw the team, it. Teams with Mark, and teams with John and Jaren, like second in the East we at 23, it. 24 years old. <laughs> like get out of my face, bro. Like I mean, I understand what the core four was. I was I was there for it. It was super dope, man. We we it lived it. We lived yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to shit on these dudes because they didn't want to stay for that, bro. Like why? Right. It's it's just like if, if I like, gave this example and I give this example using Perry Shark is a perfect example, right? Um, I grew up on Jarvis Greer, right? Jarvis Greer was like black media to me, right? Mm. When Jarvis Greer retired, when Jarvis Greer put on Twitter. Yep. That he's stepping down. I cried. Yeah. I sat there in my house and I cried in my living room when I read the tweet that said that Jarvis Greer was retiring. Right? Yep. 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 That shit didn't mean shit to Paris Shark. All right. Yeah. Because I, I ain't going to say that, but yeah. <laughs> I just didn't cry. It didn't mean the same way. Yeah, it didn't mean it the didn't same way. It didn't mean the same way. thing. Yeah, definitely. It, it definitely didn't I mean went the same to thing. Because you definitely grew up like you I went to, me, so yeah. Right. I went to Jarvis Greer's retirement party. Took a picture with him like a groupie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a picture of me and Jarvis Harris. I mean, not Jarvis. Jarvis Greer. That's my boss. Yo, yo, Jarvis here. Greer. <laughs> <laughs> I got a picture of me and Jarvis Greer in my bedroom. Then his retirement party. Uh, Perry Sharkey wasn't at nah, that party. I, 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 I'm not going, oh, yo, nah. uh, I didn't do paid the way for you. Like, bro, okay, cool. <laughs> to to Paris Sharkey, Jarvis Greer is the dude who, who retweets his tweets. <laughs> what you do, man? Uh, shout out to, shout out to Jarvis you know what I'm saying? Like, but can I'm I saying. offer? Can I that. offer a counterpoint? Come on, because I know you said there's a ton of arguments out there. I'm going to add one more argument using your analogy. Come on, all right. Paris Sharkey didn't mean shit to him. That, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, Jarvis. Like, Jarvis, nah, you're the man, like, dude. You're the man. Uh, <laughs> Paris couldn't. He didn't give a shit. No, I'm, just like, um, I'm not saying he didn't give a shit. No, he don't see Jarvis like that. Nah, but here's the like thing. He know, he know. I mean, Paris Those probably big. knows Jarvis more from Twitter and retweeting his stuff. Yep. Okay. Then he knows him from Friday Night Fever. Let which me I know him from. Let me let me let me expound mm-hmm. on your analogy to give a counterpoint yeah. on this. What if what if Paris worked for Channel Five? Same, same exact shit, bro. And and what if what if Jarvis? What if he worked for knowing that Jarvis's history with Channel Five and how long mm-hmm. he had been there as an employee of Channel Five? Would it not seem to be some kind of like <clears throat> honoring the past, playing the game as an employee of that organization mm-hmm. to go and honor the past? Is that is that the counterpoint to this? That they have no reason, like they shouldn't be. It shouldn't be held against the guys that John, ja Jaron, and all those guys didn't show up to mm-hmm. the, to to Mark's thing. But as 
the faces of the new organization, of the mm-hmm. new generation, should they play the game by honoring the past, honoring no, what but, the no, fans... Say, Channel 5 should invite, tell parents, hey, bro, you don't get this, but let me help you get this, and okay. we really expect you to Totally be agree with that. Yeah, something like that. And to, to this point... But Mark ain't Kobe, bro, so yeah. we can't act like... That's true. And to the other point... Pa- um, uh, John did, them going to be there. Did anybody pay attention to the Zebos retirement? Like, I don't know. Do we I don't know, know if they was there or not. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't remember this. They couldn't care less if they were there or not. Yeah, why did... Why that's for us. It ain't for them. Like, I don't remember none yeah. of this, right, during that time. And yeah. we were winning that season. We were losing this season. Like, there's a correlation there. Like to 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 John and them, they ain't no different than Gospel Night and somebody <laughs> coming and performing. Right to him, like why would they? It's just like I remember John and them's rookie year, bro, covering the team. I remember the press conferences. <clears throat> I don't know who asked this question. Probably Mike Sadie. <laughs> Shout, Shout out Mike. Sadie, Shout out Mike. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> jo- Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Probably was Mike Sadie. <laughs> somebody asked John this question, right? It was like Utah's first game back, right? Because, you know, we made the trade. Basically, when well, we Mike drafted John, we traded Mike but, right before the draft. Yeah. Right? So it was Mike's first game back. They was like, John, what do you what do you feel like, man? This I think is, I remember. This is yeah. your first game. Yeah, with, you got, started, you yeah. got uh, Mike Conley. I was like, man, I don't know this nigga, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, why y'all asking me questions exactly. about Mike Conley, bro? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, I know who he is. Because they just kept asking him questions, like trying to. Yeah, I know Mike. He was like, yeah, but. Like that nigga, ain't, he ain't D Rose, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like Harrison. Like I don't, it don't mean nothing to right, me, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. why would it mean something to me? You know what I mean? Like I'm not a Grizzlies fan. Like I didn't, I'm not from here, but I play for y'all now. I've been playing here for two weeks. Like I don't mm-hmm. know nothing about you guys' history. I don't know what the Max broken face Mike Conley means, or <laughs> I don't know none of that. Like what that means, nothing to me. <clears throat> and it's like fans are getting emotional because I mean, yeah, you might cut on a, a Kobe Bryant retirement or whatever, and you see, you know. Laker players that on the that's Man, Kobe, it's Kobe. Kobe, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, but I don't see why people who won five championships. Come on. And if Derrick Rose <laughs> retires and, and he gets his number retired with the Bulls, you might see Ja at that. Yeah, because he idolized Derrick Rose. Yeah, he idolized Derrick Rose, so you might see Ja at that, right? And now he is a teammate too, so he got that connection. Yeah, like that. that those dudes sense. have no connection to those right. players, and if y'all wanted them there. Put that on the Grizzlies organization and say, hey, y'all, it would be a really good look if y'all could mm-hmm. absolutely stay yep. over. Absolutely. Or don't do it after the game. Do it at halftime. Yeah. Uh, 1030 at night. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm a young millionaire in Memphis. What the hell I'm watching Mark be <laughs> dope boy ass for? I'm getting the hell up out of here. My fans are tripping, bro. Our fans are tripping. <laughs> we did sure away, man. <laughs> we talked about we talked about uh we spent 15 minutes on that. <laughs> like, yeah, y'all got 10 minutes, bro. Y'all got like y'all got 10 minutes of my time. I don't care about this crap, man. <laughs> Z-Bo, like Zebo with ball head last time I said this man got this man got sponge curls in his head. I'm like, who the hell is going on? I'm not standing for this. <laughs> Speaking of hair, did y'all see that video of that anonymous NBA star that was getting his hair done? No. Y'all didn't see that? I don't know what you're talking about. Dude had a mask in front of his face. He's supposed to be an NBA star. It looked like Ben Simmons. And it was like his whole his whole thing was fake. Anyway. Oh, sorry. you're talking about I hadn't managed to watch it. But no. Um, <laughs> I would say shout out to Mike Conley for he had a game yeah, Friday night, then Sunday. But that means something to in. us, man. Yeah. Like, shout out to him for making it. And, you know, it's the first time since 2017. Bro, Y'all like I said, to, to the Grizzlies, yeah. they, they don't feel no different than, than – uh, Gospel night, whoever they came. <laughs> like, why, why would they stay for that, man? Like, they don't, Mark ain't nobody to them dudes. Kirk right. Franklin. Yeah, yeah Kirk Franklin performing gospel night. <laughs> Ty Tribbett. Hey, they had a great concert last time we were here, though. But. <laughs> My fans just needed something to be mad about. Always. Oh, these guys ain't that professionals. And yeah, and they were, and, and nah, no. Those, that, I have like championship, real championship aspirations for these dudes, right? Like, I don't, there's some dudes like, it's all good, man. It just, you know, put their statue on the thing. No. <laughs> no, we ain't putting no statues nah, outside the building. No, no. Y'all going too far. I, I, I admire I remember what that team was. I was here for it, man. So I get all that. But no, nah, we're not, <laughs> we not doing that at all. It's but uh, it's like we just want to be included, man. Like like, like like when we say the Tigers are a mid-major team, uh, people get boy. mad. Okay. We are. <laughs> Quit, quit trying to invite yourself to the tables you ain't invited to, we bro. To just, yeah, we ain't, we to, ain't there yet, man. There. <laughs> hey, go down. Why are we putting <laughs> Tony Allen in front of the FedEx Vaughn? What are you talking about, bro? We hold up the one team out defense. <laughs> we got to be included in everything. Bro. <laughs> and good, I got to get my boy here too, man. Michael, log off. Log off, goddamn. 
<laughs> Good God. I'm going to watch <laughs> Man, I don't know what I'm on. Bro, I get pissed off, bro. <clears throat> I'm watching, I'm on Twitter, right? <laughs> But these dudes was that that good, bro. Like, good doing, God, bro. What are you doing, yeah? I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter, right? <laughs> Michael's like got this whole, what about us? This is this is gimmick, right? What about us, <laughs> right? So, like, he's like, okay, everybody's talking about, uh, he, you know, Michael, Michael gets emotional, bro. He was yes. he had the big sign with Steven Adams got traded and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, Michael gets emotional, yeah. right? Shout <laughs> to my boy, Michael. Real. Hey, Michael's got a, uh, oh, that's what I call you for, too, kid. Because Michael needs to get on, uh, Michael needs, uh, hold on. Damn, bro, I got ADHD so bad. Hold on. What was I talking about? Uh, Michael. All right, he's on Twitter, right? So he's like, he's like, oh, man, Chris Paul gets all his stuff. Everybody talks about Chris Paul, oh, Chris Paul going just uh, making teams that. better, right? Like, what about Mike Conley? What about Mike Conley, bro? <laughs> that man went to Utah. Them folks got ass. Them folks were ass as hell when Mike Conley was there. This shit did not work, bro. They traded Mike Conley for two, two first-round picks, Jay Crowder and J.J. And J. J. Riddick, uh, uh, um, uh, um. They got Russell Westbrook. Grayson Allen. It. Huh? They got Russell Westbrook. Oh, you talking about when we trade Memphis? Yeah, when we trade. Yeah, oh, I, was talking about, I was talking about when they traded him in Minnesota. Like, bro, they traded two first round picks. Jay Crowder, who's a solid uh, oh, did role player. Did you get Kyle Corbin back in the joint? No. Nah. Kyle Corbin. No. They waved him. Kyle Corbin. Might have been. I he was so. a part of that. Kyle, yeah, Kyle waved. Corbin was a part yeah. of it. And you got and Grayson, uh, Allen. And Grayson yep. Allen, right? And them dudes went. Them dudes went, got out. They were fifth seed, first they did round. They get the uh, one seed that one year. And, and got put out in the first they round. They lost in the second round to the Yeah, Clippers. second round. Then, like, that, like, bro, what, you, like, like what are you talking and about? Them, yeah. Mike Conley did not make their team better. Like, he, they, he's made Minnesota better, right? Yeah. Because he's not d I'd say he <laughs> made them. He made Utah better for that one year for that regular season. Yeah. yeah I'm like, Michael, like, what are you down, talking yeah. about? Like, I, I love the court for era, bro. But let's, let's not act like they're – they ain't the Beatles, bro. They did not win a championship. And, like, yes, they went to the conference finals, but guess what? Four teams do that every like, year. Like, are they Hall of Famers? <laughs> Four teams went to like, the conference finals every year, bro. Like, are they Hall of Famers? Marcus Gasol might make it because Oh, man, I got I to gotta stay to watch my boy Mark. The other three, <laughs> nah, they're not, they not Hall of Stop, Famers. Stop, man. What was I talking about? <laughs> they're great for us. Oh, I'm going to tell you what a real thing, though, because I noticed this today while we're talking Grizzlies. Uh, Micah hit me up the day, other day, and I was telling you, I was calling you because I was like, you need to tell Micah needs to write this story because I, I ain't want to overstep it. Okay. Um, the, the Grizzlies have not called your boy up at all. Adonis on. Adonis on. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I, I'm hurt for him. No folks are Because I covered the hustle last year. I'm like, bro, I, he should have got it today right now. <laughs> Man, they calling up uh, that, Nash the Bear. They they call up. Up. <laughs> I still, I still, know, no, I still know how to pronounce the last dude named uh, – the one that last night started with a P. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Bro, what? Because <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael uh, texted me the hey, last dude that got signed, right? I said, okay, yeah. Which one, Timmy I, Allen? I didn't understand what it was. Like, yeah, Timmy Allen. I was oh, like, G I, I don't know what it's like. Okay, what's up? He said, man, my boy, uh, why they won't sign my boy? He said, he's after like 20-something points a game. Yeah, I was like, man, that dude, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Can it reach out to Michael? Call, <laughs> call <laughs> Michael right now. I was wondering the same Tell me thing, to like put uh, Brandon <laughs> Abraham's ass on blast. <laughs> I was wondering Why? the same thing, low key. I was like, dang. Why y'all ain't got my boy? Because he was some other folks in the comments saying, hey, dang, is on I kind of feel like the, uh, I kind of feel like a, a, a bed scandal episode. <laughs> 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 I got to get, do some really, got to do some investigation into the organization. I just heard saying, say we need to get my boy done his arms. <laughs> Hey, I mean, they signed Jack White, bro. Who is Jack White? The, the yeah, singer? Jack Black. They breaking everybody off a 10-day deal. Look, can not Jack Black, bro. Jack White. Who oh, is God. Who is that, bro? Jack White's a singer, the White Keys. Damn. <laughs> Maybe we just gave Michael a good eight minutes on the show. <laughs> what about what about Mike Conley? What, what about him? What are we talking about? He needs about, to do bro? the what about Adonis? Uh, Adonis oh, man. <laughs> I'm about to call Mike after the show. Hey, Adonis make, makes everybody better, man. Make sure you watch the show. <laughs> Every team ass. Adonis is on, they get better, man. Oh, man. I do I do hate it for Adonis, though, Brad. No, it's die. for real. That's crazy. <laughs> it was kind of wild. I don't even know what we're talking about now. I mean, how long has he been with the, the hustle? Two? I know last year for sure. Because yeah. they're coping them then. I don't He's know about the year before. the ultimate definition of stash, man. And he was good to me last year. Yeah, so he's trying to hide his ass. Huh? I thought he should have shot. <laughs> <laughs> Why that man got a 10-day? Bro, don't forget to 10-day to anybody in the world. <laughs> everybody. Like, I seen a little dude out there throwing hook shots. <laughs> I thought, exactly. A 6'3 dude out there throwing hook shots. Clearly, Looking man. like Teen Wolf out there playing. <laughs> That's that, and then that move he does where uh, he drives to the goal, <laughs> does a hard stop and lets you go past him. That's a move I did when I was sixteen. Dang, bro! That I used to a, use that move. That man got a ten day, but my boy down his arms can't get one. Michael needs to like for real write a story about it. Day. <laughs> he got two ten days. They got Matthew Hurts old. Two ten ten days. Days. Fake ass Mike Miller. Larry Bird. Oh, Larry Bird. 
Jeff cool job. Cool. Uh, Jake y'all know so funny, bro. Like, y'all know, we brought the record. We got 32 players, right? Uh, and Adonis isn't one of them. Man, I'd be so nah, pissed off. But, bro, we played Detroit Friday, right? Tell me why we played against, like, three players that were on our team. Yeah. Like, who was Jaden No Way? Uh, 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 the little. The guy we trade, the guy we traded for a cut, meant to. Yeah. And then your boy, uh, <laughs> um, the dude from England, wherever you're from, wherever the other I dude. I got the other one. The rebounding 6 3 dude. Yeah, uh, I, can, I don't know. Tro- Tro- I don't know how to pronounce his name. Tosan. Tosan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to the real stuff. <laughs> Damn. 24 minutes of not nice. Nothing. But now, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, but uh, 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 we were talking about the, the national championship game yesterday, yep. right? Did you see anything? Everybody's talking about the battle of the big men, which was trash, by the way. Bro, we talked about that in the beginning. Yeah. Men's college basketball is pure ass. But yeah, that um, game was very um, blah. Did you see anything that swayed your opinion on either of those big men, good or bad? No, I'm not a person who judges off of one game anyway, mm-hmm. right? Um, of course, Zach Eady, you could be great in college basketball. You could be a great college basketball big man. Mm-hmm. I think Zach Eady was perfect. Purdue played around him, um, obviously – once they finally play against a better team in UConn, that strategy didn't work because UConn said, all right, we're just going to have clean, clean and play one-on-one. If he scored, cool. We shouldn't. Somebody else beat us. Mm-hmm. Nobody else did. So They kind of played right into the hands. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They played yeah. right into what they wanted them to do. <laughs> then Edie got tired because he can't read the whole team. Mm-hmm. And nobody can shoot. So Was it surprising to you, though, to see uh, Zach kind of pretty much do whatever he wants against a guy that's comparable in size? I mean, like... Not really. If you look at the numbers, bro, he really wasn't doing what he wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, he he did, didn't he? It's like... It it didn't surprise me. I mean, he's been dominating all year. Like, he's the college player of the year. But would it translate to the NBA? Yeah. Nobody NBA dragged him to be a scorer yeah. at all, which is, which is the reality. So, my wife, she's big into basketball, right? And she kept trying to get this demonstration on Zach Eady on defense. She was like, bro, he's slow. And he was like, well, she was like, why are you playing up? He need to be down low and doing so stuff. She, mm-hmm. she did, uh, did the whole demonstration and everything. Mm-hmm. So, I was tripping. I'm like, but she right, though. I'm like, uh, defensively, he going to be killed. Offensively, nobody's going to play. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody playing like offense going, yeah, ain't nobody going to build their offense around him. Mm-hmm. Could he be a bench contributor and a person you just throw to off the bench? Maybe. Right. But that's about it. Uh, clean game. Nothing, I mean, was it the best performance? No. But <clears throat> he's done well the whole tournament. I'm not finna. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, he won against another. He won against dude that was 7'4", that was 300 right. pounds, and <clears throat> wow, he couldn't stop him that much. Right. Okay, cool. In house, in house, Buff City Media uh, draft Twitter nerd uh, Chip Williams uh, was <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, yeah. was on Twitter last night, <laughs> and he put up interesting stat. He said during the meat of the game, like when the game actually mattered, yeah, that uh, Edie was eight of seventeen from the field once the game was in town. And, and yeah, and, he had a lot of garbage time points, and, and they went into <laughs> celebration mode. The Edie started, you know, he yeah. inflated his numbers, but he was eight of seventeen. Um, he took twenty five shots last night, which is more shots that he's taken in the game in the tournament. Uh, he shot his worst percentage. He was 60% from the field, which ain't bad, but that was his worst field goal percentage he's had. And they're all under the basket. Like, it's nothing yep, else nothing other than else everything had. was in the paint. Yep. And Klingon, like I said, um, I think he's. I think he'll be a good NBA player. I think his, I think his role Bingo, his role. relates to the NBA better. And his role that you can. We saw him out there playing yeah. with two, three, maybe four NBA-level players right. and fitting in and playing that role at a high level. But what Edie does, he's out there with a bunch of smoke, so it's yep. not going to look like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if he's physically able to play an NBA role. Yeah. Now I've heard. I heard some disrespectful comments from him. I've heard people call him Boban, which is not true. I've heard people call him Yao Ming, like, which is <laughs> racially offensive and not true. <laughs> that's the thing about Edie, like. But hold on, hold on. But yeah. I think the best come for him. Somebody called him Jonas Valanciunas. I said, I see it. Poor you know, man's JV. Go ahead. I, I thought about that too. Mm-hmm. I was like, when I thought about a player that played similar to that, I thought about Jonas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Jonas, but still he, Jonas can't even be Jonas. But he, Jonas, Jonas. Exactly. but Jonas can stretch the floor a little bit better than Zach. Yeah, he can. yeah. I think he's referring to like Grizzlies, Toronto. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. But 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 that Jonas don't exist no more. Like nope. nobody's gonna let Jonas, who actually is Jonas, be Jonas anymore. Exactly. Like those those days are mm-hmm. over in yeah. NBA. And um, like I said, I think he's a good player. I I I, I like what Mike Wallace said. He said anybody who's who's at least not change their mind about how you saw him. Because there were people who going into this tournament were like, oh, that's a second round pick. Oh, yeah. He's a top 20 he, level yeah. player. He's for a first sure. round pick. He's a sure. first yeah. round top 20 level yeah, player 20, uh-huh. in the draft. So I like, think he's good. Like, yeah. Yeah, he got some skill. Yeah. Like, I, I, <laughs> and the thing about Klingon is, I just think he's got a longer <laughs> runway. I think yeah. that like with him. His role, like you said. He's two years younger. Freshman year, he was playing, he was coming off the bench. This mm-hmm. year, you can see a conditioning issue with him. Yep. I think once you get him where he's Slim like he was his his rookie his freshman, freshman year, 
and just more experience, stronger, all those type of things. I think he's a guy that can be a better player. And shout out to Chris Harrison. He made a good point, too. He was like, when you look at a guy like Donovan Klingon, like, I don't need him to be Joel Embiid. Nope. I need him to be um, – uh, 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 uh. Just need him to be. No, hold on. What's the Clipper center name? Oh, uh, Zubac. Uh, Zubac. Zubac. I need him to be uh, Ivanka Zubac. Yep. I need him to be yeah. Jacob Jacob Purtle. Like yep. that's what I need him to be. I don't need yep. him to be any of this stuff. Yeah, I like that. And I see that in him. Walker you know Kessler. what I mean? Yeah, Walker Kessler. Like that type that's of thing. Hey, yeah, that's the thing. I saw you uh, when you was on Twitter. I saw mm. you respond to someone, and he he agreed. He like, okay, I see what you're saying. They wanted somebody that's a star. People who was dissecting. Yeah, like, oh, like, like that's all last yeah, night. I did. Do we need a star? Yeah, I, just need, like, I need a dude that can play a role with, with <laughs> our star players. Grab yeah. rebounds you know? and yeah. <laughs> give you some ass. Make Jaren be a four. Right. Right. And sit your ass down in the field when I come with either Jaren and BC Thank you. or Jaren <laughs> exactly. and, and, and Gigi. Like, if I do that, I need you to sit down and, mm-hmm. and swing this towel like in the, in the gift you got <laughs> yeah. that's, that's on Twitter. And another big man, that, another veteran big man that can help mentor him. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, man, I'm uh, like I said, I. But here's the thing. I'm going to throw some scenarios out to you, and you tell me how you would handle them come draft night, just based off the most recent thing we've seen, the last bit of basketball we saw from these guys was on the court last night. All right. Um, the Grizz is on the clock, either somewhere between 7 and 10. I think the worst-case scenario that can be is 10, yeah. possibly 11, if my math is probably wrong. If everybody behind us gets bumped up, they would bump us down to 10, right? I believe right. so. So the worst we can be is 10, right? All right, let's say that's a scenario. Anywhere between seven and ten. Donovan Klingon and Zach Eady on the board. Do you draft either one of them? And if so, which one? Donovan Klingon, if I do draft. Mm, it kind of, I mean, I'm more of a best player available, but yeah. Donovan Klingon, I would presume, I would presume he's the best player available in the seven to ten range. Yeah, I'm likely. thinking that too. Like, I'm yeah. a best player available guy, but I think by that point, my boy Castle is gonna be gone. Connect may still be around. He might be, but if I'm choosing, I think in Nick Shepard and Dylan Hammer probably gonna be gone. gone. Yeah. All the guys that don't know nothing about, they probably be gone. Yeah. So it'll pretty much be a Klinger. Yeah, I think it's still gonna be Connect. I mean, it's still gonna be uh, but Klinger. I'll probably select Klinger in that case. All right, yeah. so if it's Klinger and Edie available at 7 to 10, depends on who the other guys are, you're gonna take uh, Klinger and Edie. All right. If you bump it to the top four, do you still take Klinger in the top four? No, uh, it's uh, Sar falling to me at four. Sar's gone. <laughs> Um, if he's the best, I don't think he'll be best player available at four. Um, but you wouldn't take him in, in that spot. Probably not. I might look to trade down okay. potentially. All right, would you trade down? Could you see a scenario where you trade down, you let Klingon pass, and you trade down and get Edie? No. So Klingon's available. You gonna take him? Yeah. I think that's where I'm at too, man. I think I, I think if he's out there. It's I'm like, gonna get him. It's like you said, the road. I don't know. Because I think that dude's got a longer runway. Yeah. Like he's young. I don't young. see Edie yeah. with the Grizzlies, the way the Grizzlies play their style. Even Edie come out the bench with GG Vince. I don't see where he fits. We man, don't play him. We don't yeah. mess about him on the big man. Move out the way. I, we don't play that style. Super I don't see him. And, they don't, and that's not saying he can't play in the NBA. There are some teams where mm-hmm. he would have a role with. I don't see it with the Grizzlies. All right. So if you're at your pick, nine and 10, right? Last question as far as that goes. Open them down. <laughs> And now, let's say you're at your pick, not seven through ten. Kling is gone. Go. Would you draft Edie in the top ten? Hell no, nah, I gotta go find your ass later. I had to, to find a trade. <laughs> and I know, and you know, people would be like, trade, what you trading for? And that's why I'm that's why I don't want to just say hey, trade, because I'm mm. like, where am I actually trading for if we make a trade? Like mm. the centers we want are free agents. So Bro, we can't trade I'd for be, him. So I don't know what <laughs> I'd be so afraid but, to trade for him. Trade I mean, I'd be so afraid draft, draft. to draft him that high. Because yeah. we bitch about Zaire going ten, man, that dude's but that dude's chances of being ass are higher than yep. Zaire's were, like for real. <laughs> yep. And that's a dude I just saw score thirty seven last night. Yep, that dude's chances of not being an NBA player are higher than Zaire for real. Not even not being an NBA player, but being fitting. virtually unplayable. Right, like, yeah. there's nothing you can do with yeah. him out yeah. there. That's like, the point. What anyway? Yeah, yeah, that's scary, bro. Taking a dude like that that high, that's scary as hell, bro. But I can see Klingon being an ass too. Like, yeah, yeah. like I said on Twitter, like, like I, I can see a scenario where both of these dudes are bums. Um, Mike Wallace said it early on. Uh, I would say Rise and Grind. That's just good business show. Mm-hmm. Um, he said earlier he was just talking about like, like DeAndre Aiden's, uh, the Bobos, mm-hmm. uh, all these players that we thought was gonna be great. Marvin Bagley's, like James Wiseman. He was like bums. <laughs> yeah, you like that. It happens, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? He happens. was arguing with CJ. I was like, he was like, ain't that one of them turned out to be a nice. So we were about to knock these guys and. Those guys draft high. Right. And then people are saying, like, well, do you draft? Well, if people are saying that they're nothing but role players in this draft, like, shouldn't we just? Tra- no. 
What are you trading for? <laughs> if you see a guy who's, if you see a guy who, I, I, I feel like that guy is going to be an NBA right. role player. You take him, because bro, you look like you said, Marvin Bagley, DeAndre Ayton, all these dudes. There are a lot of misses they in the were draft. They drafted as to be more than this. To be more player. than it. Yeah, and they ain't even Except that. Maybe Wiseman, Wiseman even there. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Think so. For real, man, that kind of stuff can happen, man. But uh, this is Perry Sharkey, y'all. We come in here, and we have fun each and every Wednesday. He gonna be with me for the rest of the show for the three pointer. You gonna do? The, you gonna do yep. uh, inside the same brain too, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, we got an interesting yeah, topic for way. for that. So we definitely gonna have my boy Perry on. About to take a break. When we come back, it's a three pointer here on the Edge of the Same Show. See y'all in a minute. Good friend from Boca. Good friend. Dusty May has left Boca at FAU, Boca. And, and now he is coaching at Michigan. Um, is it a good hire by Michigan? Did yeah. you? I mean, would well, you? Me and Gabe been beating this drum for a long time now that this was probably going to happen. Yeah. This was the time for him, and if he didn't jump now, then he could have missed out on his opportunity. You, to you would go. have to either commit to rebuilding at FAU or hightail it, and he chose right. to hightail it. And that was the only decision I think he could have made. When it comes to this year, if you are going ahead and judging them off the fact that they were thirty and three in Conference USA a year ago, and they made it to the Final Four, and they were a top ten preseason team, I think you're rating them from a place that that where they should, they never should have been yeah, rated that no. high in the first place. No. People need to realize getting to the damn tournament from Florida Atlantic is a win. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at twelve p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Do you guys think that we check every box for a playoff team? I don't know what all the boxes are. I don't know what college football budget's boxes are. But let's say there were 12. We'll go with 12 teams. There were 12 boxes. I don't know what they are. Do we seriously check every one of them? No. You, I mean, and I don't, surely we're at like 11 out of 12 or 10 out of 12. I don't know how you can say you check the defensive box, whatever the defensive box is, I mean, because it's, it's such a mist. Right? Yeah, like you can't mystery. even. I don't even think you can fill that box in yet. Well, it's then maybe like, that's not a box he's talking about. What are the boxes to be a? How is it the whole defensive side of the ball not a well, box? Number secondary is a mystery. You get a lot of guys who are replacing there. Uh, linebackers Jeff gone. Like yeah. you just got Chandler back. Yeah. Um, you have high hopes for Mackey, but like, what's his role? Is he going to be Jalen's replacement? Is he going to be an actual stand-up like linebacker? Like, what 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 role is he going to play? Tune in to Tigers Untapped with T.J. Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all, welcome back to the three-pointer. My boy, Perry Shark in the building, man, joining me as he does each and every Wednesday. Let's get this thing going, man. Calipari headed to Arkansas. <laughs> He's uh, funny. I'm going to say this. I'm going to put this out as a disclaimer. Let me let me clear the, clear the table, clear the air. I am not the angry, mad at John Calipari dude. A lot of y'all are. They folks still ain't over there, man. A lot of y'all are. You need to get over that shit. How long? It's about 15, 16 years, bro. I, I just watched 48 <laughs> hours of conversation. In, in 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 the Bluff City Media Discord, which y'all cry baby ass, mad at John Calipari still. So don't tell me it don't exist. I guarantee if I go to Tiger Facebook, that's why I over. Everybody's talking about John Calipari. I guarantee if I go to Tiger Twitter, everybody's talking about John Calipari. Get over that dude. And I'm gonna say it's a different. There is a difference to it now. We're gonna be real about it. There is a difference between the the, the situation that Kentucky oh, yeah, feels yeah, right now. To run them up out of there. It's not the same situation as here. Yeah. Because we were the wife who felt like I did everything for you. I yep. cooked that clean. I know I probably didn't. I, pro I know. I know you. I know I. I. I I'll kick my covers with you. I knew that, that you probably were. Uh, I wasn't the, the prettiest girl in the room, <laughs> but you were with me, and you left me, and I was kicking and screaming at the door, grabbing at your your pants leg. I know I was yeah. that wife when John Perry left the first yeah, time. Especially John Wall not coming through. This, yeah, right. Wow. This ain't the same shit. <laughs> Cause they was about to get, they was on Cal ass. Cause his wel his <laughs> welcome, welcome was worn out. And shout out to John Calipari though, cause like I said, he gets a brand new honeymoon. Finessing the game. It's a finesse. Man. It's a kid that said that in the Discord, and I totally mm. agree with him. Like this is not. 
I think this is Kyler Perry saying, I'm about to turn the dial to 80. Yep. And I'm going to – In the same conference. In the same conference. I'm for the coast. I'm going to be good in this and conference. And still make all of it, all the money that I ever wanted. Yep. But I ain't got to worry about Big Blue Nation. Without the expectation. And I'm going to do this until it's time for me to get the f- – up. Oh, Lord, excuse me. Time for me to get up out of here. <laughs> I'm going to do this until it's time for me to get up out of here, man. I, I totally agree with that. And, and that's what – I and, and like I said, like I, I'm hearing people saying stuff like, oh, man, he's going to kill. Like he's going to change. He's going to break college basketball, bro. There, there are there is no imaginary tier of players that he can, that he can get with more nil. Money. That he couldn't get it. He's Kentucky. been getting the best of the best. The best of the mm-hmm. best. He's got two top five, top six lottery picks that were coming off his bench this year. He's right? got the number two uh, ranked class in the in the in the entire class this year. Right now, to, uh, probably going to go to Arkansas. And it's still been one championship. And but that, I don't think people don't say how long he's been in Kentucky, bro. Yep, yep. So. That stuff happened in. The Tigers went to the National Championship game in 2008. 2008. He left in 2009. He left 2009. Yep. It's 2009. 2024. He won. He only he won, won one championship Anthony in 2012. Davis. And I ain't acting like that ain't nothing. It's, it's great. awesome. Congratulations. He went to a couple more Final Fours. But it wasn't yeah. enough. The climate of college basketball has totally yeah. changed. The freshman, you ain't. And even then, like, and part of the reason he only won once. Freshmen, over the history of college basketball, Freshman led teams typically don't win the championship. Yeah. They might be talented enough, like uh, the Fab Five. And we talked about that. Yeah. To back to back finals, but they didn't win. Yeah. Kentucky find the one. Duke won that one with uh, Tyus Jones and Julio Okafor. Yeah, them. man. It's but like you. It. The, 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 the playing field is even out so much that the the shenanigans and, and the stuff that the Calipari could do oh, no. to gain advantage, those things aren't don't matter anymore, bro. Like, because you normally, on your ass. You normally need a veteran guard. If you have yeah. freshman guards, they can struggle. Most time, in and the time. they'll be good. Like I said, I'm not gonna act like they're yeah. not gonna be good. They're gonna be like top 15, top team in the country type stuff. But the veteran teams normally, yeah, that's gonna be dope them. for them though, because Arkansas has never, they ain't been there in it's a long been a while time. Since Notre, yep. so yeah, so he can kind of chill out. But I'm not, I'm not super excited about it. I, I respect Bomani Jones entirely, but I, I think somebody had tweeted something on, uh, you know, had retweeted it in mm-hmm. the Discord and said that. It was a seismic shift in college basketball, no. and I'm like, nah, man, I don't Wait, see it that way Calipari at all. Leaving, going to Calipari Arkansas. going to Arkansas was a seismic shift in college know, basketball. That's not true, really. And I don't believe that. That's I, true. I, I, I described it as because <laughs> he Arkansas. was taking he's taking a Walmart greeter job. You know, to yeah. the, you know who's the Walmart the people who are retired who yeah. want to retire but still need to work a little bit. Yeah, that's Calipari in the situation. Yeah, y'all gotta get in my face because Arkansas not even in bad shape. Like Eric Musselman did pretty well there. He just and, had a down year this past year. And, and he I, left and went to USC. Yeah, I mean, he he obviously just wanted to get back to L.A. Yeah. But, like, you know, I, yeah, man, I, just, trip. I think he's going to do great at Arkansas, and I think the Arkansas fans are going to be happy with whatever he does there. They're yeah. not. There's no expectations of him, man. you got to win a national championship, mm-hmm. bro. It, like, it, like it was at Kentucky. Like, they'd be disappointed if he didn't get to a Final Four. And Kentucky, man, because UConn on their on they ass. Right. Yeah. The folks got six now. Yeah. And Kentucky. that's that's something you talked about at the beginning of the show, too, <laughs> yep. man. That UConn thing. That team has won in, in since, two, since, since 1999. They've won six yep. of the 25 national championships. Yep. But you don't. But nobody really wanted to give them the credit for being nah, like they're blue bud. They extremely blue. That shit's purple. Now they won one with <laughs> Kevin Audi won a championship. Yeah, and he got fired like two years later. Man, that shit pure blue. <laughs> That shit pure blue. Nah, it ain't purple because <laughs> blue pur- purple got some red in it. Nah, them boys whatever blue. <laughs> blue is possible. Like for real though. Like you could go and kick UCLA up out there joint because. Yeah. That fuzzy one that's championship we... in my life. When I was a kid. Oh, Ed O'Bannon in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Number two, man. Speaking of, uh, of West Coast basketball, look at this segue, man. Goddamn segue. Oh, Gang yeah. up in this bitch, man. Y'all stop playing. <laughs> Bronny James, man, said he going to test the waters and do something. Right, ain't going to lie, man. If I was Bronny James, like, that dude literally has so many options that regular dudes in the college basketball don't have, bro. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> yeah, everybody can everybody can test the water, right? Yeah. Yep. But Bronny James could one million percent say, and this is ultimately, I think this is an underrated option that people aren't really thinking about. Bronny James could say, okay, hey, I'm gonna go get some feedback, right? And the feedback mm-hmm. is, hey, Bronny, take your ass back to college. No, because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go declare myself for the draft, not get drafted. I'll go play. I'll get a two way with somebody, or I'll be in the G League somewhere. I'm not hurting for nobody's money. I yep. can go live the NBA. I can go live the NBA. Practice training lifestyle. Somebody will sign up to a two-way deal. And I might see if anybody is going to bite on this shit my dad said about Give draft, draft my son, which ain't happened. That ain't happened. Yeah. But he's got so many options, bro. And I could definitely see a scenario where he says, I'm just going to go live the NBA lifestyle. I'll go be in the mm-hmm. G League. I'll be on a two-way. I ain't got to go to school no more. 
whatever. I'm Bronny. I, was, I can go. I could get endorsement deals, all that type of stuff. Still, <clears throat> lived in, in lived this quasi NBA lifestyle, and I'll get there if I get there. If I don't, I mm-hmm. don't. You know yep. what I mean? Especially Kenny. Oh my God, I forgot to call you, Kenny. Another answer to the same conspiracy scenario popped into my mind with this whole Bronny thing, right? Right. I, lo- I love these so much. <laughs> Listen to this, bro. What if? Like we said, we think the NBA got some up their sleeve when it comes down to developmental, developmental stuff. Right? Absolutely. They're they not just going to let the NBA, NCAA, and NIL just boot their ass about it. They're not just going to take an L. And them folding the at night was not, it's not going to be an L for them. Yeah. <laughs> what a LeBron James yeah. has said, let's expand the G League for the sake of his son. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let y'all put the other <laughs> two and twos together. Oh, can surprised. you see that scenario? Oh, definitely. I wouldn't be surprised if that drops next week. <laughs> and LeBron's a commissioner of the G League. <laughs> <laughs> in, a like, Triple H, in a Triple H type manner. I like, see y'all LeBron. first, man. Y'all heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Come on, man. We've been sowing the seed. Tell y'all. Yeah, ain't surprised. The NBA got some up their sleeve. They are not taking that type of ill nah. from, from college basketball. But uh, like I said, I'm not mad at Bronny. And if, if that's not the if that's grand conspiracy, is not the thing. It's probably a scenario where he tests the water. He goes to he gets to be a rock star and and experience something his dad never experienced, which is being courted by schools. Bronny James will be courted. He'll be a high oh, yeah. high level transfer portal guy if he goes in. I would take him tomorrow at Memphis. Oh, who are you telling? Yep. Who are you telling? Backcourt him and my boy um, BJ Haggerty. Yeah, they still young. Yeah, hey, man. Although on. his although his boy he played high school with transferred though. Who is it? Ashton. Ashton Hardaway. Mm. Show did. We're gonna talk about that too. How did how did it not make the three point? I know it was something. <laughs> that's that's like what through the made Number three. three. That's not through the cracks. That's not through the cracks. I knew it was something. Can't even get something. Something, gotcha. something happened. Just behind the fourth wall. What the fuck? What the fuck? Pitting got going on. Pitting did something. Three point and one. Something happened. We need to talk about. Ashton Hardaway. His son said, "Bye." Oh man. I don't think nothing of it. Is that something though? No. Let me see how I can word this, cause stuff this Memphis, so stuff will get Want me. Want to play with his brother? <laughs> I get that. I'm gonna say this. I'm, this is what I think. Now, uh, okay, man, I hope this don't get taken the wrong way. All right, Gabe is my son, right? All right, I'm a regular ass, regular job working dude. So I was married to Gabe's mom. We had a kid, and now we're not married anymore. We co-parent all those type of things, mm-hmm. right? Penny Hardaway is a former NBA player who has a child from a woman. I don't know their particular situation, but I bet it looks different than me and Gabe's situation. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to bet mm. it's not the same thing. And with that being said, that father-son, this isn't Rick Stansberry's kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? With him. It's Literally. a little different situation yeah. there, right? And I've heard from people that Ashton coming to Memphis wasn't even a, a blinking red hot 100% that kid's coming to Memphis. Mm. I heard there was a little, Dad, you my guy, but... I don't know. I don't know if I want to come here or not. You know what I mean? That's Kenny. I don't know. That's what I've heard. So right. I've seen people say, I, even media members say this, um, that the reason Ashton is leaving is because of the the shit that Memphis fans talk about his dad and his brother. What are your thoughts on? I that? think that's dumb. I think because because mm-hmm. Ashton's not the first coach's son, right? Ever by no means. He's not the first coach's son. This guy minutes to people question. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's true. I I think that, and there, there's there are some conspiracy theories about this too. Yep. Are you ready for those? Nah. <laughs> Are you? Re- have you heard them? No, nah, I've heard two. I've heard two strong ones. I've heard that. Uh, oh God, what did I say? Oh, I've heard that this is Penny's grand chess move. <laughs> He's telling Ashton, Ashton, I don't have minutes for you. I don't have spots for you. I don't have scholarships for you. I'm tired of criticism. I get go to this other school. Get your game together. And go 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 back in the oven. And when you're ready, I'm gonna come bring you back to Memphis. And you'll be my. Transfer portal guy coming back to Memphis by the time you're a junior, senior, and you're ready for the college game, I'll bring you back and we'll, you know, go off into the sunset together. That's one conspiracy where I think it's BS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That makes no sense at all. All right. And theory number two says that a pen is about to leave Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just don't know, but Jaston knows who he got in the portal. I've heard, I've heard, I've seen conspiracy on the other side. Both, I just think, I, he is I like, just think that Aston Hardaway and Penny Hardaway's father, father son dynamic is not like, yeah, everybody else. I think it's a, I think it's a very interesting type and, of. And some situation. kids don't want to play for their dad. Like 
I, when I was playing basketball coming up, my dad always came assistant coach. I, I right. didn't want him coaching me. <laughs> and then we and then we and we and Ashton Hardaway's also not from Memphis. Yeah. He has no ties to the city of Memphis. He's from mm-hmm. California. I don't even know if he even spent a summer here before. I mean, I don't know. I saw him play with Bronny James and a little classic thing. Right. Like, played against uh Curtis Gibbs. Right. But yeah, like team. I said, I, I really don't care uh too much about that whole situation at all. And the and one for the three pointer. Uh updates on John Moran's situation. Boy free. I, I think. Because then I called Giannato. Really, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I called Giannato because I called DeMichael, who can't never answer shit I called his ass about. Called DeMichael, right? So, so I said, all right, Mike, I'm going to call Giannato because your ass ain't helping me none. I called Giannato. I still can't, can't get an answer. I, okay, it seems like, it for all intents and purposes, that Ja is going to escape this, right? Like this is. Because they really are self-defense. His right. lawyer has come out, or the lawyer for Josh Holloway's family has come out and said that they're going to appeal, appeal that. Uh, Okay. Folks, them folks burn up money at this point. That's man. cool. And if I'm a lawyer, I'm gonna keep draining your money at this point too. Like this, uh, Jai is going to walk away from this, and there's going to be nothing. You like, called this months ago, a year, year, a ago, year ago, year ago. <laughs> you, said, you said this is they should have taken the settlement. Should have taken the settlement. Yep. This is gonna look silly. Yeah, you're gonna walk away with nothing. It's gonna look silly. Um, but yeah, props to Jai. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Free job, man. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> I'm gonna say this, and uh, Jai has been. Surprise! I ain't gonna say surprisingly, but scarily, out of sight, out of mind. John, you ain't heard John's name, but shit. And what I'm saying is, you seen good stuff. You seen the AAU stuff. You seen clips coming out on there. You seen him doing a little, except for money makers. stuff. You seen him switching agencies, that type of stuff. I think John. I think John. He playing chess. I think John got a. Yeah, we love chess, not checkers. You know what I'm talking about that. But now, I think. The the summer of twelve this summer gonna look a whole lot different than last summer of twelve, mm-hmm. and I think, I think my man gonna come in over focused, like looking yeah. like yeah, 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 yeah. Because somebody said last week about the agency change, that yeah. I think y'all need to. That I think people have to remember is that you you hear people you hear conversations about great future players, and 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 Ja ain't mentioning none of them. I think that he's making moves next year to mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah, y'all gonna remember. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be like some, some a, a Kendrick Lamar verse on yeah. y'all. We're gonna talk about that when we come back <laughs> <laughs> on the Edge of the Stage show. We're gonna talk about the whole little oh, thing, man. Boy. These dudes in love with each other, man. They can't even they can't even rap about each other, man. Hey, man. These dudes in love with each other. We're gonna talk about that and more when we come back. Football Inside the Same Brain, sponsored by our good friends at Creative Seed. We'll talk about that and more <laughs> when we come back here on the Edge of the Same Show. See you guys in a minute. And that's what I was going to go ahead and warn everybody about that anyway. We are going to be more precautious on yeah, people 100%. this year. You have and to. we're going to peel back layers. I think it even extends past Jordan Brown, if we're being honest. I think it could extend to Javon Quinterly as well. But he had very good moments. But you look at what was said about him in the offseason, fair or not, yeah. by Nate Oates leaving Alabama. And you yeah. go, okay, okay, maybe there was something there. After things. the way last year went... I don't think it's what were we saying about Jordan Brown when he committed? They could be the player oh of the year. Oh my gosh, player in of the, the year can't no, I can't any of these guys that join this team, I can't just like take it at surface value and just no. say, Oh yeah, that's I have to do it to dig a little deeper. Dig deeper. Now, even if you dig deeper with PJ Haggerty, you feel fine. Yeah, exactly. But you dig deeper with Dane Danger. There's some there's some concerns. There's things. some things that I you know, I don't think are perfect. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at twelve PM on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. After three entire, I think he made it through the third one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. He might have left with a quarter left in the third practice. Blue Esposito is gone already. We hardly knew ye. What are you going to do? I'm just proud of him because, you know, his dream was to coach at Memphis, and he hey, got his chance. He had it as a goal. He didn't say coach at Memphis for an entire season. Well, I mean, first of all, hour. when you're getting six times the pay just to go to Michigan, I think you do it. And nobody's going to sit here and blame him. I'm just, it sucks. We thought that that was a great hire. He was coming in. He was a co-defensive coordinator. He'd been a defensive coordinator before the FBS level. You know, you got Jordan, who's in his, really his first year 
yeah. at this level. Obviously, he'd been the D coordinator at UT Martin, but felt like that was a guy that was going to be able to help him out kind of go through his first season at the FBS level as a defensive coordinator. So I feel like it just sucks. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. At Create a Sig, our top priority is to provide the best customer service experience as possible while offering the largest variety of vape supplies, legal THC products, and smoking accessories. Our trained sales associates are here to assist any and all customers to help them find the best products available. With our daily deals, weekend deals, loyalty rewards program, and our punch card program, there are tons of rewards to earn to help our customers save plenty of money along the way. Check out one of Creative Sig's four locations across the greater Memphis area and come visit us. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show, man. Time for Inside the Sane Brain, sponsored by Creative Sig. Four area locations, my favorite one, Kenny. The one in Midtown. Where's it at? That's <laughs> over McLean and Madison. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Let's go. I passed by that joint the other day just for just to clarify. Just to clarify. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, and, and you we, we working out something for the 420. Yeah, man. Yeah, y'all don't know nothing about that, man. For the 420, we, we playing on something with the good people out there, man. You know what I'm saying? But uh, check them out. Like I said, super friendly staff out there, super knowledgeable staff out there for all your Delta 8, all your nicotine products, for all Maria Nickels out there. <laughs> Straight nicotine. Hey, man. Hey. Parish, man. That's so funny. <laughs> I almost bleeped that one out the last time. I was like, wait, that's like, not. Hold on. All my nicotine users, <laughs> my, all my knickers out there who are nicotine users. Uh, yeah, make sure y'all go pick that up, man. If you're a Delta 8 guy myself, you fool with the diet weed, man, the low calorie, low carb marijuana like myself. The weed zero. The weed zero. Who get you some of that, <laughs> man. You can, Police pull up on you, you just, man, take a big puff in his face. <laughs> Blow it out of his face, man. You're a sucker. Get out of my face, man. You can do that to the police because you got that you got legal stuff on you, man. Creative Sig does not endorse that <laughs> last tape that, uh, At all. <laughs> that Anthony just gave. Uh, <laughs> do not. You vape it or drive it. That's on you. <laughs> yeah, that's on you, brother. Uh, but, yeah, check out uh, Creative Sig. Get the good stuff, man. Get the Anthony the same, same Asylum Pack, man. The same Asylum Pack. You can, get, you can mix it up uh, with different. You get a, uh, you get a pre-roll. You get a, uh, a vape. And you get uh, edibles. Yep. All in that pack together. The Delta 8 pack. And yep. the Delta 8 pack. Break down the, uh, the St. Asylum uh, nicotine The pack. nicotine pack is a, uh, basically they're all nicotine vapor, vape products that basically you can use, you can put in your pocket. You can, mm -hmm. they're super light, super lightweight. The two on the very right um, of the of the screen here are are ones that can fit in your hand. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just super dope, man. Got you, different levels of nicotine involved in it. Yeah, um, man, it's just fun. Different flavors. That one in the middle is called Black Ice. It is the best wave yeah. bar that's out there. Um, disposables, man. It's fun stuff, man. Yeah, they got really high quality products there. Check it out, man. Like I said, we cooking up something with them for four twenty, man. Make sure y'all clear your schedule, man. If you're a four twenty participant, we are gonna try to do something big. Uh, out there with the good people at Creative Sig, but um, inside the same brain, something is on my mind. Been on a lot of people's mind. I'm a hip hop head. I love rap. I can listen to rap all day long. I can listen to slow rap, fast rap, battle rap, love rap, romantic rap, <coughs> conscious rap, whatever. I can break it down. I can break that genre into so many genres. I can rap enjoy rappers it that try to sing and rap. Yeah, sing rapping. And <laughs> same time. I like. I like to. I like to talk time. about the different eras of rap and the phases and guys who kind of started and pioneered those type of things. What's your favorite era? Um, uh, I think the best era of hip hop. The the semi modern era where like. When you had kind of the, the the passing of the torch over from Jay Z to Kanye to mm -hmm. Drake, like that two thousand six mm -hmm. to two thousand ten with Lil Wayne, with Wayne and them all the yeah that yeah, was, I was about to say that's my well, that's yeah. what I grew up on with Wayne, yeah. Gucci, Jeezy. Because a lot of stuff that I that I thought was fire, uh, yeah. like the core four, when I go back and look at it, it really wasn't that hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> In the whole grand scheme of things. I hear you. Um, I watched a doc. Speaking uh, of rap, real quick, I watched a documentary about um, Dolph and Gotti's situation, mm -hmm. and um, God, it got me back on Dolph again. I loved his stuff, man. man. I loved his stuff. I was, so I'm, a, I'm glad you said that, bro. 
because everybody's been talking about the Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Drake stuff, and Kendrick dropped his bar and all that. That song is hot, but it's hot because it's one it's on one of the most classic like beats. party beats. Yep. Like that beat was like a LA because I was dead wrong. Yeah. I thought that was uh Who the Crunkest. I thought Who the Crunkest. I thought DJ Paul made that beat. Yeah. I didn't know oh, that no. was like yeah. a I didn't it's know that was like a West else. Coast yeah. Yeah. club yeah. anthem. I didn't uh-huh. know that, right? So like that beat is classic because of that. Memphis put his spin on it, had a crazy yep. run with Who the oh, Crunkest. No. And now it's, you know, it's got the Kendrick Lamar thing with him in future, which is going crazy. Because someone had played Cole's verse on that same beat. It went, went right through it. Was it. Way was like, more it was way more bump. <laughs> I was like, dang. But, like, you know, everybody's talking about that. Cole had his little weak ass, lullaby ass return. <laughs> <clears throat> and, like, bro, of all people, if you, if you accuse anybody album of making, making somebody go to sleep, like, J. Cole, nah, you need to just stay out of that lane, bro. But, like, all that type of stuff, right? I'm, I'm, here's my thing. This is my, I've said this on Twitter. I've said this on Facebook. These dudes are J. Cole, 39 years old. <laughs> Drake, 38 years that was old. That my first thought when uh, Kendrick Lamar dropped Kendrick Lamar, it. I want to say 36 years 36, old. 36, yep. Y'all dudes are way too close to 40 yes, to be having be. this type of conversation. Yep. Like, y'all y'all are too established as grown men and as artists and as rappers, yep. all those t- and as billionaires, millionaires to have these type of stuff. Like, no. Eight like, years too late. This, this should have happened when, when Kendrick dropped. No. This happened when Somewhere Kendrick dropped Control. When mm-hmm. Kendrick dropped control yep. and said, I'm trying to be better than all y'all ends, y'all nicotine users, you should have came, all y'all should have came out uh, against in a war against Kendrick Lamar. Yep, at that time. That's Meek Mill, all y'all. Yep. Wale, all Speaking it. of him, him Big Wale. Sean, everybody. Everybody. All y'all should have got <laughs> on Kendrick Lamar's ass. <laughs> y'all now dudes is beefing. old. Y'all old. <laughs> now Meek Mill and Wale are, are beefing. <laughs> yeah, what the hell stop, is going bro. on, man? Y'all too old. And you know what else I see about all this? You know what all this kind all this comes off to me? Comes off fake as hell. Yeah, yeah. It comes off like it's like it's a rollout. so. It is a rollout. And J. Cole showed it when him apologized. Like, Here's the, look at the timing of this, bro. Look at <laughs> look at the timing of this whole thing, right? Right? Okay. Future and Drake, who I think really do have a problem, mm-hmm. they come out and, and, and Future drops this album, right? And then Kendrick Lamar puts his verse out. All right. What's conveniently going on? Drake and J. Cole's tour is wrapping up, ending. Yep. And Dreamville so, Fest is coming. Co- Dream started. Fest is coming. It started. It started. All this happened in a two weeks span, right? Apologized. It's Dreamville right. Fest. He, did, he, makes, he drops his song yep. right before Dreamville thing. Yep. Then he apologizes. At Dreamville. He drops a whole album, 13-track <laughs> album. Called Might Delete Later. Might Delete Later. And then <laughs> delete it later. It's a, it's a roll. <laughs> Now this, now this Drake, got, that. Drake got his tour, and yeah. Drake tour is just ended. So you know Drake about to come with something. Drake about to get all y'all ass. Just let y'all know, cause y'all counting Drake out like he's just some kind of whatever. You can say what you want a bit about Drake, but there's some petty light skinned energy about to come with Drake from the shut this whole thing. Now. Like y'all act like Drake ain't doing the dude who been petty talking about this dude. This dude here talking about girls, girls he met one time and make a whole song about, and their boyfriend. <laughs> and poor, uh, poor, what's be honest, baby dad. Uh, poor, poor ASAP it's Rocky. <laughs> They made a call. They've been calling that dude a bum for six years. Hey, yeah, y'all think Drake gonna say nothing? You lost your mind. The Kendrick Lamar part time Brock Lesnar ass man <laughs> ain't done nothing. Ain't done nothing. You came out with a damn trauma album in the middle of the damn summer a couple years ago. <laughs> like, bro, I don't, don't, don't want to go to therapy. And no, no, that's the point I'm trying to make, right? So, in the, the point of all, in the, matter, in the middle of all this stuff going on, right? Everybody's arguing about this. Glorilla, I didn't get me, say, me talking that. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, she beefing with uh, Girl for I don't girl. care about nothing. That's that. funny, bro. Because I'm listening to Glorilla, I'm like, damn. Right, that's your bumpy. <laughs> she had to tell the people, baby, you got to sell it. You're like, man, shake all that shit. <laughs> that's what I want to hear. <laughs> shake some bags. Make that ass clap. Bang. Make it snap. Talk to me now. That. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> what the bag yo say? Oh, she had a tear bells with BBL. I ain't even know it. That's what I need to hear. That's what I want to hear, bro. I want to hear. I'm at the point like, bro. I don't care about beef. This rapid and rap. Who's the greatest MC? Put music out, man. Put some music out, yeah. man. Good music. What y'all fine with J. Cole's sports? Like, okay, y'all putting the music out. Here we go. Especially but, this rollout as fake as this mess started right, to look right now. Right, but then you do the podge, you're like, oh, here we go. Hey, mess look all look I fake. I ain't care no more. This Baby, mess man. all looks fake, bro. I don't, I don't care about Drake responding no more. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Hey, I don't care. I will listen to the Drake response, though. I mean, all, yeah. When it comes out, it's going to be all. It's going to be all. You're going to talk about it all, though. But like I said, like, it's cool. But y'all just too old. I would have loved this 10 years ago. yep. At, fire. After that control, after the control, after the control y'all was all verse. buddy, buddy. Oh, he ain't talking about me directly. Nah, bro, y'all should have got his ass, baby. Because Kendrick Lamar, your, your part time rapping ass. He said their names directly, man. Like, yeah. it, it, crazy. Yeah, y'all, it's part time little baby rapping ass. <laughs> 
That's Jaws. And I'm a, I'm a Kend- I'm, I, I love Kendrick Lamar. I, I prefer Drake out of that three because Drake makes elf boy music. Drake makes music about women and you know all that and stuff. See, I'm a J Cole guy. Out of three. I like Cole too. They crap like, their ass. I, I do like all three of them. Yeah, yeah. I like. I love all three of them. They, yeah. they, why? How can you? They not are. Love all you say the big three. They are. Yeah, they ought to be. They were the big three of this era. But so. yeah, that's all yeah. I got for these bums, man. But yeah, like I said, <laughs> let me ask you, who's made the best project out of all of them? Though I don't know, but it's, it's all a matter of what I mean, you like. I know it depends. <laughs> <laughs> All of them had as a, a project. Is but which like, one? Which one do you like? I mean, I'm a Drake fan, bro. Yeah. I, so I'm a, me personally. I'm going to take Cole for a seal drive. I, and that's the thing about I, music too, man. It, that's, but, I was listening yeah. to Joe Budden podcast. They were talking about this. Like they was like, if somebody else dropped to to pimp a butterfly, would I say it was hard? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody it's else, each person. Yeah. Like I listened to Drake's uh, the album. Everybody say was the worst one when he went off into the dance stuff. The, uh, oh, that was terrible. <laughs> I love it, <laughs> but you probably like. But if somebody else made it, I would say it was trash. Yeah, exactly. I would. I listened to it because it's Drake. I hate that, Jay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I cut the house on and yeah. I cut I, I cut that on to get to uh, clean the house up. And, hey, I tell you something about when he got your lights. Yeah. Uh, Drake and J Cole. Anytime they drop a song with Twenty One Savage, <laughs> it'll be hard as hell. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's, it's like. <laughs> I, it's, it's all relative, bro. Like you're gonna, you if you're a J Cole fan, you're gonna yeah. listen to his music more with than much more intention yep. than I'm gonna listen to. Yep. Well, I'm a J Cole fan too, but I'm not that deep of a right. You gonna listen to Drake more than the like man that damn therapeutic ass? I need counseling <laughs> ass album that a Kendrick Lamar dropped a couple years ago. I loved it. Exactly. I, I wouldn't listen. I was to that. cool with it, but it wasn't. Good, if it wasn't somebody else, I, I'm gonna. It's because to it again. <laughs> it's because Good Kid, Mad City was the best album ever made. To yeah. Me. And no so, time. and yep. they own, they've earned that equity with our ears, man. Yeah. So, so you'll listen to whatever they make, and you'll make yourself like, yeah. like that therapeutic ass, like me. Jesus. I think I might have been molested. I'm not sure. As album, <laughs> like me. My, was... my mother, was, my auntie was uh, a pirate. I think it's all tr- uh, pirate. Which is I'm, why, which is why you absolutely... I blacked out because of uh, because of poverty. I can't remember. This whole thing is why exactly why you listened to the Entree 3000 album when it that came flute out. Ass album. Yes, I did. Did. He earned <laughs> equity in my ears. I, I listened to that flute ass album. Like, I didn't make fun of it on the show, but listen to right. it. Like, How's a kite? <laughs> For instance, I'm a G. G Shout guy. out to the people that are good, our good friends, our sponsors, <laughs> and Crazy Sig, who got me through the Entree the 3000 flute. album, the flute album. <laughs> like Jeezy, my all time favorite rapper, right? Recession 2 was horrible. I but you listen, you listen to it, <laughs> <laughs> and you can make yourself like it if yeah, you want. Hundred percent. Uh, yeah, man, man, that was good. But yeah, that's all I got, man. What's going on, everybody? This is Anthony Sane of the Anthony Sane Show here to tell you guys about Creative Sig. Creative Sig is a smoke shop located here locally in the city of Memphis. Four awesome locations throughout the city. I'm a big fan of the location on Midtown and off McLean and Poplar. Go check them out, y'all. They got everything you need as far as your nicotine needs, as far as your Delta 8 needs. They got all of that, y'all. Just go check them out. They got the Saint Asylum package, which you can go get different varieties of things on the nicotine side and on the Delta 8 side. Mix those things up. You can come out with a great package. The Saint Asylum package is there at Credit Sig. Let me tell y'all some more about Credit Sig, though, guys. Um, they strive to provide top-notch customer service, quality products, large varieties of nicotine, uh, and legal THC products as well, customer service, loyalty, and punch card reward programs. They offer fantastic rewards from 50-cent bottles of juice or salt nick disposables to 25% off an entire transaction, all earned by making purchases at any Creative Sig location. The staff members are ready to help you and find the perfect products to get you started on your vaping journey and ensure you have all the knowledge to do it like a pro. Mention code word VAPE901 for a one-time 15% discount off all your entire transactions at Creative Seed. I'm telling y'all, go check them out. Great people, super nice staff. Go get the Santa Saddle package, y'all. I'm telling you, just go get you straight, man. Just go get you right. Go check them out at Creative Seed. For Kenny Stubblefield behind the glass for my man, Paris Sharkey, it's Anthony Sane. We'll see y'all next time. We out. Thank you for listening to The Anthony Sane Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.